Okay, there. That's it. Take that out, me. Bow, 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 bow. Right. Just a test, one, two, one, two. I don't know how I can work it out, actually. I'll get a bit of feedback, but I'm not from working. Testing. Testing. It's working fine, Mark. So you've got two minutes, then kick off when you're ready. Lovely, thank you. Testing. That's off. Good. Two minutes. Be standing, I'm going to be in three positions. One will be here, about here when I present. Okay. Two will be about here when I'm well, I on the bag. And then one right back here when I do the floor work and kicks and everything. So you get the feet in. When I go back here, it's because I want the feet in as well. Okay. All right? So you've got to get the whole picture. Around just seeing your feet, you can see this all in. Okay. You have to, every time I move up, you have to tilt back. Okay. Like now, because I'm going to start about here. Okay, we've got one minute. Can I get rid of this message on here at the top if I press that? Hang on, let me have a little look. Just press that little bit. Seconds. You've got me there because I'm going to bit, bit to the back of it. Right? Cards, Jumbi! Sorry? Can you? Good evening, everybody. Um, I hope you're all well and very safe, of course. My name is. World Master Mark Farron, 7th Dan, and I started Taekwondo in June 1984. I was not the most gifted of beginner students, except I really wanted to learn how to fight. Luck was on my side as the martial art in, in, in the town that I lived in um, was run by a really tough guy who got a hard reputation. And now that I look back, that was perfect uh, because I just needed to uh, man up, as they say <laughs> in this day and age. As well as Taekwondo, we also did full contact kickboxing. I gained my black belt in both of these disciplines in 1987. Shortly after this, my instructor retired. And in November 1987, I started my first school at Kings Lynn, Norfolk, which still runs today. Today, I'm going to run you through various subjects within Taekwondo. Please remember that many of the instructors within the TAGB have got to where they are in many different ways. They follow different routes. Um, I sort of done kickboxing as well as Taekwondo, and it wasn't attached to any major organisation at that time and came into the, in the TAGB as a black belt. So obviously my route has been different to many others. And because of this, it can at least lead to slightly different ways and approaches to techniques, for example, adding on also that the instructors may have struggled at certain things in their growth through Taekwondo, in their training time, and they might have had different ways of improving that technique that may help you, that might not be the standard. I should be teaching in my own style, which, uh, as I say, men differ, differ, differ from the way your teacher, your instructor teaches it. But please don't let me overrule your instructor or, um, you know, I'm not telling your instructor's wrong. And um, hopefully your instructor won't say I'm wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of information within Taekwondo, a lot of different ways to skin a cat, of course. Some of this class may be basic uh, for some of you higher grades. So maybe not look at what we're doing today, but maybe look at the presentation. 
maybe you might pick up some good points or some bad ones, okay? Or pick up some principles or ideas that maybe you can use when it comes to teaching your classes. So uh, welcome to my high-tech luxury training facility here at Farnham Towers in Kingsley, Norfolk. Um, in reality, it's just my, uh, my garage and I, I, I um, basically took a hint um, from uh, Mr. Simon Duddy, okay, and uh, fashioned it after his dungeon, okay, that he has at his house uh, that he trains in. So uh, that's, uh, thank you, Simon, for the uh, pointers on your lovely uh, layout of a training facility. So I think we better get started. Let's start with a warm up, shall we? Okay, so first of all, raise your right hand, arms up and down. I have to be a little bit careful because in my luxury training facility, I tend to have very low beams. Please remember our Just Given page for the NHS, all us lovely world masters are working our little socks off here now, trying to get you guys so maybe put a little bit in the pot in the pot for these NHRS guys who are working all the time. There we go. Hands on the hips now. Round we go. Nice big circles in one direction. I'll keep popping down and looking on my laptop, see how you guys are getting on. And let me just change the other way. Don't forget, feet shoulder width apart. I should be back and forwards as I go today so uh, we can see the different views. I have my lovely assistant Sue on the camera. Okay, so we're going to zoom down to the knees now. So it's feet together, you half bend your knees, rotate round the front, and then back round the front. So we don't rotate round the back, okay, well, at least not in my school. So your instructor might have a different take, but we rotate round the front, and then back the other way round the front. And we're working down all the major joint groups, muscle groups, as we work down the body on this very basic, easy light warm up to start. Then, right foot in front, heel off the ground, and rotate your right ankle in one direction. Now, 25 years ago or more, I had a really big problem in my schools with students twisting ankles, including myself. And we were having students twisting ankles virtually every week. And we started to use this, just changing the direction now, just roughly about a few seconds on each ankle, and it's completely stopped it dead. We haven't had an ankle problem since. So it really does work, a simple little ankle warm up. Just change onto the opposite foot now, so left foot in front, rotate round in one direction. And then in the other direction. Then we're on to the wrists. So now from here, just keep your hands open and roll your wrist round as if you're washing your hands. Don't keep your wrists straight and move your arms like this, because of course there's no wrist action there. Let's just rotate that around this way. And then we change in the opposite direction. And then hands on the hips. From here now, turn your head to the right hand side. And then to your left hand side. To the right hand side and the left hand side and then carefully up now now don't angle don't go too far back it's just an incline and not head all the way back on this one and then down chest chin to chest and then up again not too far back and then again take your chin to your chest that's great so now, okay, a little bit more vigorous now. We're going to start jogging on the spot. I might just, excuse me a minute. Whoa, let's get that out of the way. Let's do this a bit further back. There we go. Okay. So we're jogging on the spot. Okay. So now, 10 seconds. We'll just get our knees up a little bit higher now. So get your hands out, palms out, palms down. Here we go. 10 seconds out. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten. Lovely. Back to normal light jogging. Now from here now, we're going to kick the heels up behind. Okay, so you're just going to have your hands hanging down and kick up from behind. Again, ten seconds on this one. 
Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's great. Back to normal jogging again. So now, legs force. You want to do 10 seconds of these. Are we ready? So from here, you're just going to cross your legs, alternate each time which leg crosses. I'm going to do 10 seconds of this. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, and nine, and ten. Good, jog it again. So now we're going to do striding, backwards and forwards, and trying to get a little bit longer on each stride. Start short, and then move long, okay? So from here now, striding, backwards and forwards. We're going to do 10 seconds of this one now. And one. And two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Lovely, back to jogging. And no star jumps. Just ten little seconds of star jumps. Are we ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20. Lovely. Very good. So that's a little bit of a warm-up. We'll obviously do a little bit more warm-up work as we go through the class. So now we're going to have a little look at the first piece of the class, and I'm going to look at a little bit of punching work to start with. Um, I uh, sort of gained a lot of this from the sessions that I trained with Grandmaster C.K. Choi. I was very lucky in that I was able to do many seminars with him and tour with him for a while in Europe as well. And uh, the next piece I'm going to take you through is called the punching pattern. And uh, this is excellent. In fact, it really goes through all the techniques you need if you want to be a boxer, because all the punches and stances are in there. A few little rules as well, and I'm sure many of you have done this before. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a good little refresher and a reasonable warm up as well. So first things first, and I'm going to be uh, talking about this quite often, when we start talking about punching, people get a little bit excited and forget everything else. Punching is eh, maybe the, probably the easiest part of it. What you've got to remember is the other bits around it, which are the stances and, and can keeping your hands up. Without those two things, you might not even be around in a real situation to do a punch. So from here now, we're going to go right leg back into fighting stance with our hands up. Okay, so we've got our hands up nice and high, elbows in. A lot of people forget this and leave that bit wide. A punch to the solar plexus can drop you on the floor as quick as a good punch in the head and can even leave you on the floor longer, to be honest. So get those elbows in at all times. Now, the way I was shown this, okay, from the start was keep your fists up. Keep your fists on your temples and only let one fist off at any one time. And as soon as it's out and back, then the other one can go, but not before. And you definitely can't have two out and don't just leave an arm out. It's out and back. So the punching pattern is basically 10 punches. The odd number is punching with the front leg or front arm off the front leg, the jab or the front arm. OK, which will be numbers one, three, five seven and nine and the even number punches two four six eight and ten okay is off the rear reverse leg also to bear in mind when you do the reverse leg and if i step back in fact i'll do it sideways now so you can see i'm now facing this wall from here now when i do it you actually twist now i know this has taken you from an l stance through a walking stance ish okay and then even further okay but this is ensuring that we get our hips into the punch and we get a longer reach with the punch. OK, we will be talking more about hip twist and power production, hopefully later in the seminar. So from here now, OK, the 10 punches are as follows and we count the number of punches all the way through. So punch fists up now, right leg back in your elbow stance, elbows in. Make sure you're doing that. OK. Um, the mindset on this, and this will come up again as well, is, you know, if you're practicing, some, practicing something incorrectly, you will just get very good at doing it wrong. 
And that's as simple as that. You've got to be very, very strict with yourself, okay, to make sure every time you do a move, okay, that you do it correctly. So from here now, L stance, hands up, elbows in. So first punch is a high punch, a straight jab there in front. Bring that back, and then the reverse punch with the twist and leg goes straight through once the fist comes back to the same time. So from here now, it's one, two. Okay, so ready with me? Ready, one, two. One, two. One, two. Keep going, guys. Let me have a little look on this screen. I hope I can get this to work right. One, two. One, two. One, two. Can't get that to go up and down. Never mind. One, two. Okay, so you've got the one, two. Now, three, four, very, very simple. It's midsection. So now you're aiming sort of the solar plexus. From here, one, okay, twist through two. Remember the back leg twisting, and then back. So we'll do all four now. Ready? One, two, three, four. And again, one, two, three, four. So that's the first four punches covered. Very, very simple. From here now, the next four punches are done in the same manner, but they're all hooking punches. Now, with a hooking punch, people get very much into this wide swinging business, a haymaker, if you like. Uh, they're not hooks, okay? They're just a swinging in technique here. Okay, a hook is actually a very, very close in technique and arguably a lot closer than a jab or a cross, okay? It comes in real close, okay? If you watch some boxers when they're boxing, okay, they've virtually got their head on the punch bag or their forehead on the punch bag when they're doing the hooks. It's a very, very close punch. So we need to bring those in. When you punch high for number five and number six, you can obviously turn your hands in a normal manner around you come. But for number seven and eight, because it's lower, you might find that rather than having your fist absolutely horizontal, you might want to tilt it a little bit. Okay, maybe even bring it into vertical as it comes around, depending on how uh, close you are with your technique. Okay, so let's go through number five, six, seven, and eight, just to get used to those. So high punch with the front hand is five here, then six, then seven, then eight. Notice I'm taking care every time I've done one punch to get that straight back to the head before the next punch goes in. Okay, so you're covered at least one side. Okay. There are a few other little tricks you can use when you do things like a reverse punch, okay, when you punch here, because obviously this side of the head is exposed, okay, when you do a reverse punch or a reverse hook, particularly to midsection. And for here now, you can bring your shoulder up and tuck your chin down. So now if someone comes through, it's going to glance into my shoulder, maybe only um, catching the top half of my head. Remember, the two major places that are going to put you on the floor is your temple and the point of jaw. So from here now, okay, five, six, seven, eight, ready? Five, six, turn the hand, seven, eight. Okay, again, five, six, seven, eight. So now we'll put all eight together, all right? So they start with number one, the jab high section, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the last two punches are very interesting. These are uppercuts. Now these are not punches that we do that much in Taekwondo. Uh, we can't really use them for sparring. They're a very close in technique and really seem to be um, a heavy contact uh, technique, which is great. And of course, these can be used for many uses. Number one, to come up underneath the chin if they're still, or jaw if they're standing upright, or if with those hooks, you've now got them to buckle up, this is where it can come up, okay, into the face. All right, now from here now, the front punch again, Okay, we're gonna drive that up the front here. Okay, so one, start using your hips now, and I'll be talking in a minute how to get front hand techniques with hips in a minute, but hips coming up one, hips coming up two. So one, two, and imagine that you've got like an iron bar connected from your elbow to your hip. And so your hip, okay, I'll do it sideways now, your hip pushes the punch up. Okay, other side now for the jab. Okay, from here, punches it up. Your hip moves up and puts the punch up there. One of the masters of uppercuts, well, punching in general, was, of course, Mike Tyson, okay? And if you watch him in a lot of his fights in the 1980s, late 1980s, he put so much power in his uppercuts, he would actually lift off the floor, okay? 
and he would actually come from here and actually take off as he was doing the punches. He got so much hip twist um, in his punches there. So let's put all 10 together. Are we ready? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, fists up, hands up, elbows in. Okay, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. As Master Carter said yesterday, guess what we're going to do now? Yeah, you got it. Jump onto the other side. And this is what can vary martial arts like Taekwondo from some other fighting styles. And the fight fact that we try our very best to get it on equal sides. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, right and left hand. Um, some of you might be surprised in finding that you might be better off, better after a while at the side you thought, or the leg, for example, kicking, that uh, you thought you were worse at. For example, I've always been right-legged, but uh, the last few years, um, I've found that my left leg is actually starting to improve more than my right leg. So anyway, let's go left leg back now. Hands up, elbows in. So from here now, Okay, front punch again. We'll go a little bit quick on this side so we know what to expect. Remember, everything now is mirror image because you've now swapped the front arm. So it's going to lead, lead the way. So front arm first, which is now the right. One, two, three, four. Then your hooks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's your ten. Let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now jump change again. And what you can do, okay, which is a nice little routine to work at, not too exhausting, okay, you can go off and work on that, working on keeping your guard up, keeping a good stance, and then the speed and the power. So that's what we need to be looking at with those things, okay? So one more time, okay, we're right leg back, ready. I'm gonna have a little watch of you now. I'll count the numbers out and I'll try and work out how this computer works. It seems my biggest challenge today is getting these, oh, I can't, I can't seem to get them up and down. Oh, hang on. Right then, are you ready? So here we go. Right leg back, ready to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. Right, okay. Master Carter was doing a punch thing. I loved it yesterday when he punches to the screen and you guys have got to react and yeah, try and block him and counter attack and everything. I enjoyed that. So I think what we'll do today is we'll have a little bit of a speed test on the old punching now. Of course, you know, it's that graph, isn't it? Okay, when speed goes up, power to a point can go down. I know it sounds ridiculous uh, and fast punches are powerful, but you can actually overspeed and then lose even more power. So you've got to judge at the time, which is more important, the speed or the power. Okay, I, you know, many times speed is a very important aspect of punching and power isn't necessarily everything. Right, and here we go. We're right leg back. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the 10 punches. Okay, let's see how quick we go. Ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How do we get on? Okay. I think most of you done pretty well. I haven't got so many on my screen down here, but I'm getting one or two of you. Okay. I don't know, uh, Gavin, if you're there, I don't know if you can alter that side screen. I'm getting, I can't get anything to control. I can't see many people on there. I've got a few blank screens as well, but uh, hey, never mind. Um, uh, I'm <laughs> used to standing in the class, no students, so it's fine. <laughs> Okay, so we've had a little look at that, and I know you guys got really excited when you tuned in, okay, because you saw the punch bag handed up there. So I'll put it back on, we'll have a little look at something. Okay, this is the problem you get to my age, lifting punch bags around isn't as easy as it used to be. And of course the problem is today, in my luxury training centre, okay, I've let the staff off for the night, so I'm here all on my own. Okay, got to sort the pool maybe in a minute, a bit of a problem, but never mind. Okay then, so here we go. We're going to look now at transferring some of that to the bag. Obviously, uppercuts are a problem. And I know you probably haven't got a punch bag today. 
okay? Um, I've actually got this here because I've got no one to hold circle pads for me. If you're lucky enough right now where you are to have someone hold a circle pad or two, okay, please get them to chuck them on now, okay? And I'll have a little chat that while they're doing that, okay, and we can have a little look. But if not, don't worry, you can still punch into, into mid-air there like we've been doing, okay? And um, practice on the pads another time. This isn't rocket science, really. So I'm going to just, we just go through the routine a couple of times, punching the pads, and then I want to work on, okay, to develop a bit more power. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to do it side on now. I hope people will get the best views. I, by the way, before we go any further, I don't want any of you guys, okay, having nightmares, okay, over the night when you see the power that I'm now going to produce. Okay, I don't want, I don't want you guys going to sleep and waking up in cold sweats, uh, being scared, scared or anything like that, guys. So it might be wise to turn away. Uh, if, if you're easily scared. Okay, but here we go anyway. So, the first two punches are going to be high. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. Then the hooks, one, two, three, four. And then, of course, the uppercuts. Well, I suppose you can do them on a bag. You normally get a ring around the bag to do those. But with your circle pads, you can get your partner to drop the hands uh, and up with punching. Just a little side note about circle pads. Um, yeah, particularly, obviously, from the kickboxing training and everything else I've done over the years. Uh, and still sort of do a bit of as well in my classes. Um, yeah, holding the pads is a really uh, important thing. And in fact, the person punching can only be as good as the person who's holding. If you've got someone in front of you who's not holding them well, um, it doesn't matter how good you are at punching, you're not going to do a great job. You do need to have someone who's very, very good at holding pads and very, very quick and knows what they're doing, okay, to be able to do that. So we've done the four, we've done the, the 10 punches now, okay, and obviously reverse punch, we get a lot of talk about reverse punch from here, okay, pushing through with the hip, okay, as I, I believe a few instructors have talked about already, from here, pushing through, okay, and it just snaps through here as we do the punch, okay. The front hand is the problem, and what you get is an imbalance, okay, and you can actually hear it. If you listen to me punching now, you can hear it on a pad or a bag. Higher the frequency, lighter the punch. Tap, tap, light punch, bang, bang, heavy punch. So you know how hard that's getting hit by, how, by the sound. So here, you can hear it, tap, tap. Heavy punch, thud. So deeper the sound, the harder the punch, okay? And so what we get is in class, of course, we get everybody going, tap, tap, boom, tap, tap, boom because they've got no power with the front hand. Now, if a thought of an attack on the street, someone kind of coming and attacking you, for example, is an issue, and I know it's one of the reasons I start Taekwondo, because I've been in that situation, okay? That front punch you've got, okay, is the safest punch to deliver, and um, it may be the only one you get in. And if it's a tap, it's not gonna work. So that one punch, what one window of opportunity you had, you missed it, okay? By the time you get to the second punch and the cross going in maybe for the third punch, if that person is any good, okay, fighting, you know, you could be in trouble. So we've got to make sure that everyone counts. Remember, if you're guarded up, you don't want to let your guard down to do something half-hearted, okay? It's got to be uh, a genuine good technique. So, you know, could be working for you, all right? So how do we improve that punch well actually it's not as hard as you think and i've been using this system for many many years okay if you're a green belt or above you've already got a head start on this so all we're going to do is for a start okay is i want you thinking about pattern one yo okay and the way we do pattern one yo in my schools is and i've noticed a few people doing it differently just recently obviously with the online stuff but when we do that punch okay so here we are we've gone here one Two, from here now, the fist comes back to the belt and so does the foot slide back. The other opposite hand comes out as a reaction and then we punch into our fixed arms here, okay? So we're gonna use that front leg and punch on your pad. Just picking it back, hands up here, bring your leg back and then punching through using your leg. Now, it's, it's not really about using the leg, it's about using the hip. So if you see, I'm pulling my hip back, 
okay, from its 45 degree position, oh, that was a bit north, wasn't it? I promised I'd do today in, in my posh voice because uh, we haven't got a Norfolk to English translator here today. Um, so from here, bringing that foot back purely to get his hip back. Now it needs to come back to, well, I, I, 90 degrees as opposed to the 45 where it was at least or even more. So you're pulling back to 45, even 90 degrees, so it's pointing over there now, as opposed to where it was pointing when you've punched. Okay, and then that, okay, from here, will throw your punch in. So that's what we're gonna do now. Get your hand up, bringing your foot back, and punching that leg up. So all you're doing is bringing it back, okay, and then out. So bring it back into a vertical stance, or even less, rear foot stance, really, and then punching out. Now let me have a little look at that. On my numbers, ready? Here we go. Hannah. Two, set, net, Hannah, two, set, net. Okay, so now obviously, we'll turn it away and let's try again. So from here, bring it back again, hands up, okay. Punch. Now, do you remember, obviously, when you're doing your pattern one yo, okay, that that third punch, or that third move, I should say, here, the punch is from the belt, okay, and then from here, we're issuing it out forwards. At the moment, we're keeping our hands up, so don't let either of those become a bad habit when you do the opposite, if you understand what I mean. And, of course, it's quite confusing, even as an instructor, really, to teach all of your white belts, yellow belts, and green belts to keep your fist on your belt, fist on your belt, fist on your belt. And then they start sparring and you're then getting onto them all night because they keep dropping the hands and not having the hands up. Um, and it is a bit of an issue for new people starting Taekwondo to say, well, fist here or here, you know, I've got, I'm getting in told two things. But the idea is fist from the belt, okay, is designed to improve your power and to get your hip twists working. That's why we do that, okay? So eventually, okay, we can have our hands up, okay? But the reason the hips on is to get our power going from our hips. So we can do it on the pad now. So from here now, okay, keep your hands up, okay? Don't let that hand come back. Keep that hand up, just bring the hip back and then punch forward, okay? As you do that punch. So from here, and breathe, okay? So ready, here we go. One, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I see some of you sort of warang style sliding the whole body into it, and that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, I would just check though that you're not using all your body weight to do the punch there rather than using your hip twist. Using your whole body weight is great, okay, but we're trying to work on hip twists now. Um, there might be scenarios where you can't slide forward. Uh, if you're in a tight enclosed area in a, in a pub uh, without social distancing, <laughs> we'll probably never be in that situation again, but okay, you, you know, you need to be able to get your hip twist, and sometimes it's all very, very close. There isn't a lot of space, okay? So let's try the other side now, okay? So I'm... A bit too far into the bag there, so I'll just do it outside the bag now. So from here now, hands up again, bring that foot up, okay, and then punch forward. Here, punch forward again. Don't worry about sliding, just get that hip back. That's what the leg's coming back for. My hip now is coming back, so my right hip is now back towards the wall, and then push it out with my right hand, okay? So that's the first stage of trying to get that hip twist working. And then, of course, what we've got to do is we've got to do it without moving the foot because you're telegraphing the technique. For those who don't know what that means, it's a boxing term, telegraph as in uh, some uh, uh, telegraph message. OK, you send the message ages before the recipient gets it. It's posh, isn't it? OK, so basically, yeah, you, you, you let people know what you're going to do well before you do it. OK, so from here now, what we've got to do is I want you thinking about sliding that foot. So everything, all the action is going to be the same, but you're not going to slide the foot. So from here now, okay, instead of doing what you did before, which was just this, and what you did next stage was here, pulling the hip back and this, okay, what you're going to do now is keep the foot here and just pull the hip back here, like that. Okay. 
okay? So let's have a little look at that together, ready? So feet on the floor, don't change your stance now, no sliding forward, keep your feet where they were, just pull the hip back, and you need to do this sometimes by using the knees. Your knees are bent in L stance, it does mean a little bit of tweaking about the knees to get that hip back. Hands up, remember, bring the hip back, and then push the hip and push the punch. Okay, ready? And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Great. Obviously, it takes a long while. This isn't going to happen overnight and will take quite a bit of practice. Let's go on the other side now. So right hand side now. Now, this may feel odd for about 90 percent of you. 85 to 90 percent because uh, a lot of people are right handed and they will fit, fight orthodox as opposed to what's called safe ball. OK, um, but with our Taekwondo kicking, some of you are, many of you are right legged. So you might find that because you want to use your right leg, OK, your right hand leads. So you might have to swap the most things around to get your best position. Not your own one now, of course, because we fight both sides. So from here now, let's do that again. So from here now, we're not sliding the foot. OK, we're just going to pick the hook, hip back, hands up here and push. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. OK. So that's a bit of punching off the front hand. OK, I'm going to move on now to give you a bit of a rest on that. OK, and we're going to have um, a little look at some stretching work. Very, very light stretch to start and then basic kicks. OK, so I'm just going to move my bag out of the way. There we go. Right then. Uh, one of the warm up or stretching routines that I really, really do enjoy and I think is great because if you're a competition fighter in particular, um, you know, you can be sitting around all day and then some of your divisions called up. You've got to be on the mat and someone's got to fight first and it could be you and you've only been called up three minutes beforehand. So dynamic stretching uh, is very, very good indeed. Um, dynamic stretching, the, the improvement of flexibility through movement, of course. Now, technically, I very often use a wall. OK, a wall or a partner, put a hand on the shoulder to swing my legs backwards and forwards. OK, do you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. But I could use a chair. OK, so here's a chair. I have it this way. OK, um, chair's OK. Uh, not my favourite because I find I'm too low and I'm, well, my body's down and I want my body up. So as that post is free, I'll just move this bag. We'll have a little go over here. Right. So, dynamic stretching. First of all, left hand on the wall. Okay, you're going to swing your right leg. It's forwards and backwards. Okay, you want to get both height on either. You're stretching both ways. Um, your hamstrings and your quadriceps. You're stretching both ways on this one now. Start lower and work your way up. Okay, as with a lot of taekwondo, good old number ten, ten an inch. Okay, so from here now, we're going to swing forwards and backwards. Or if you're really good, backwards and forwards, whichever way you want to do it. And here we go. So we're getting that little bit higher. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lovely. Then obviously we're going to swap over. And for this now, do rotate. Now notice that I'm swinging my leg that's furthest away from the wall, the chair, or my partner. I don't want to be swinging this middle leg here. Okay, I actually broke a toe doing that once. I caught it on the way through. Okay, because I hit that. So keep your leg on the outside at all times away from your partner. And we swing the left leg. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Love it. So that's the front swings, or front back swings, if you like. Now it's the side swings, more to get your hips in, ready for such kicks as side kicks and turning kicks. So I'm sure I've got a bit of enough room here now. The important thing now is I'm swinging my right leg to turn my left leg to point the opposite direction. So if we can just swing the camera down there, if my lovely assistant can do that, you'll see my foot on the floor is pointing 
to the left when I'm going to swing my right leg to the right. Now, the through swing, if you like, the bit here, really all that is for is there's no stretching to be had in that direction. OK, it's the swing out that's going to count. So that we use that to get the emotion going, OK, into the swing. OK, so let's just try that now. All right, so it's going to come up there. Maybe. OK, so from here now, here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Try and get the whole leg if you can. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's the right leg done, of course. Then we turn the right leg through to the right hand side, and it's the left leg now that's going to swing to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now the hips are warm up in both directions, ready to go. I mean, I wouldn't just use that. OK, I was in a fighting competition, I'd be doing a bit of a run around and, you know, perhaps a little bit of stretching on the floor there, do a little bit of box stretch and such things, do a little bit of lower back as well and suffer a bit from that. So we'd be looking at that. But uh, so anyway, now we move on. OK, and it's to our basic kicks. Now, these three kicks set your techniques virtually for all the Taekwondo kicks that you will do. It's all about your foot on the floor, which gets your hip position correct. OK. And if you get those things right, the rest will follow, okay? It is about you checking what you're doing. The amount of times I see students, particularly now, because I have a lot of students who are videoing themselves and then sending me the videos, sir, what do you think to this? What do you think to that? Time and time again, the same person, foot on the floor, okay? You're trying to do a turning kick with your foot pointing to where you're kicking like a snap kick sort of position. Well, it's never gonna be a turning kick. It might be an angle kick at best, Okay, and of course other things come along like hip problems and everything else because you're trying to get your body to do things that it just doesn't want to do. Okay, um, please don't get involved in all this, oh it's okay, I'm double jointed. Uh, that's a complete myth, you're just more flexible than other people, okay, but that will not stop you getting injured and a bad technique will give you poor power, okay? And also you might be there thinking, I don't know, I go to all these competitions, I do my patterns, my kicks are higher than everybody else's, okay? Why am I not winning the patterns competition? I don't understand, okay? It's because you're not doing perhaps the kicks properly, okay? Even down at a basic level. So let's have a little look. So the first kick, of course, is gonna be front snap kick. Okay, so we're going to go right then back into L stance. Today, we'll do forearm guard and lock. Okay, more traditional now. Okay, so here we are. So from here now, snap kick, I don't need to teach you guys to suck eggs. You're just going to come through now, kick with the ball of foot in front. But now remember, you're not kicking up. Your knee doesn't get to where it should finish. Finish, and then the bottom part of your leg, okay, from your knee down, then goes up. Think about what you're hitting. OK, think about a football maybe bouncing high in front of you. You're not kicking the football up in the air. You're kicking the football back where it came from. That person you're hitting, you're knocking them backwards. Your foot is going through them. It doesn't really, but the power will. You're pushing them back with that ball of foot as you push it out. It's like a punch, OK? And very similar to side kick, actually. Both these techniques are really punches, OK, with the legs. So from here now, we're in our forearm garden lock. Okay, we pick our knee up. Now the bottom foot, you've got a bit of a latitude, a little bit of flexibility on this. It can point front, front forward, and um, you'll find some people will go out to about 45 degrees or so as it angles out there. Okay, but no more than that. Okay, the basic idea is, okay, is that your foot, your foot, okay, uh, where your foot points is on the power line of all the kicks. I'll explain as we go on through this, because a lot of people don't realise this, OK? Your power line of your kick, your foot stands on that power line. So if my power line is going forward, my foot, OK, points on that line. I know what you're thinking, but you'll see where I'm getting to in a minute, OK? So from here now, OK, pick your knee up and kick forward and then back, OK? So from here now, ready? And kick and back. Just as a little side point, I see loads of people, even my own students, 
who reach forward, cross their fingers, interlock their fingers. Have you got that on the video, Anson? Okay, from here, and then pull. Why? I've never known why. Okay, I can understand. Okay, you may be grabbing somebody on all that, but if they're that close to grabbing them around the neck, how are you going to do a snap kick anyway? And if you're crossing your fingers, your hands are not up. And you've also got to uncross them, clench them, and bring them back to guard as you're falling forward, okay, into somebody possibly. Uh, so don't do that, okay? From here now, okay, you can bring them up because obviously you're coming square through. And of course, that's one of the most dangerous positions of a kick is that you're on one leg now, standing square, and it's hard to cover all the midsection. But however, from here now, okay, pick up and kick, okay? Now the foot, okay, what you're looking for is as the knee comes to its final position, or as uh, Mr. Charlotte Scott says, to its parking position, okay, the bottom half of the leg then goes. But you don't want it to stop and then go out, okay? What you want is the foot to move continuously all the time. And in fact, when it starts coming to that position, the snap of the snap kick is that knee taking over and elongating that foot out for the kick here. Okay, so it's here. Okay. That's what you're looking for. And not. Okay. So let's have some go at snap kicks and I'll have a little look how you're doing. Okay, we're going to do five. Okay, so ready? Right leg back in garden block. Ready? And up. Two. Set. Next. That's it. Okay, jump chains on your side now. Again, this is very, very basic. We're not, you know, trying to do anything different here. I'm just giving you a few points the way I teach, okay? So ready? Prime garden block. Ready? Five again. Ready? Hannah. Two. Set. Next. Dancer. Now, as I'm going through those kicks, obviously, getting it up slightly a little bit higher each time, okay, because I'm getting a bit more warmed up. And being an old fogey as I am these days, it's not so easy to get to your maximum height on your first kick. But I always tend to have a little look at doing that. Um, arguably, would you ever use a very, very high snap kick? I suppose it all depends how tall the person is you're kicking. But uh, however, you know, to be able to kick up here makes it incredibly easy to be able to kick out here at midsection going for someone's solar plexus or point of jaw. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why we do high kicks. It's not necessarily to hit high target. It's so that when we come down to a more reality level kick, okay, it makes it so much easier. So that's snap kick there, okay. Um, just want to make sure, foot on the floor, yeah, we should check that. Uh, ball of foot, okay. Kick forward, not up, remember that now. Okay, don't forget the acceleration, okay. Oh, that's another little bit for you. Do remember when we kick, guys, that if you kick with a straight leg, in any of these kicks, if your leg is absolutely straight, whoopsie, there we go, I'm actually not kicking midsection, okay? That is actually still a hook section kick because my hips, where my leg hinges from, I don't know if you've noticed, but here in Norfolk, <laughs> we have our hips below our belt, okay? Just there. So if I'm hinging from there and kicking straight out, if my leg is horizontal, then actually I'm technically below my belt, especially if you're Simon Cowell and your belt's up there, okay, <laughs> you know, you've got to get your kick up. So we do need an angulation on that foot here to be able to get a midsection, okay? So something to bear in mind there as well. So the next kick we're going to look at is side kick or side piercing kick, okay? You notice the word jirugi is in there, okay, as in your charge, jirugi, charge in the kick. Jirugi, ah, now what about that? Have you noticed that's a punch? Okay, well, the Korean word for punch and piercing uh, is the same. Okay, so punch and piercing, punch a hole in a piece of paper, pierce a hole in a piece of paper, is arguably the same thing. So, um, yes, so side piercing kick or side kick piercing, punching, okay, they nearly let out in the title of the kick that it's very, very similar to a punch. And I would liken a snap kick to being a jab, okay? And the side kick very much more being the cross punch, the power one. The problem with a side kick to do it right, there's three stages to 
for the sidekick. So let's just have a little look at those. From here now, stage one, to do it properly, to do it right, to learn it. OK, the problem is nowadays, OK, that uh, sparring comes in very, very quickly nowadays. We're getting people sparring in competition at yellow stripe. OK, that's fine. But they're learning shortcut kicks. And I think if you're doing your kicks properly, you've probably got two different types of kick. You've got your sparring kick and you've got your traditional kick. OK, because you're not telling me that. Your side kick back belt you use to break is the same side kick you use to hit someone when you're sparring. Okay, it can't be, it can't be the same kick. Okay, so the power kick, okay, that we're going to do now is your traditional one. And this is the one that you need to use for spar, uh, sorry, for patterns, floor work, breaking, step sparring, where there's no contact. Okay, other than breaking, pad work, okay, bag work, okay. This is the one you're going to use for that. Sparring, you have to lighten up, go for speed rather than the power, as we've mentioned before. So here we go. The, the three moves are very, very important. First move is to get the knee up. Nice and high. Pick it up once. That's it. Okay. Don't drop it and weave it about. Don't start drop it now. What, what was that all about? You know, moving here, you're either going to kick low or you've got to pick it up again to do the side kick, which you made a three technique kick. Four techniques now. Up. Down, turn, up, back, out. It's just too, too many. Okay, so pick it up once, then rotate on the bottom foot. Now, this is very, very important. The, the bottom foot is we pick the heel off the ground, okay, rotate it, drop the heel down, and then kick. Now, look where my foot is. Look at that little beauty. Remember I said about your foot goes on the power line of the kick? Well, it is there. I never said... Your foot points the way of the kick. So in side kick, even though your foot's pointing that way, and your kick is going that way, if you draw a line where your power goes, which is straight forward, your foot is still on that kick, uh, on that line. So you've got to do that to get your hips right. If you don't, if you try doing it from here, your hips are never going to do a proper side kick. Never. Okay, you've got to get them right over to here. The best kickers I've ever seen, okay, and you've got people like uh, World Master David Shepherd tomorrow night, 7th down, Okay, wow, we want a kick he's got. His side kick is absolutely super legendary. Okay, um, so you know, hopefully, he'll be doing some of those for tomorrow. I hope you forget what we're doing today. <laughs> okay, but anyway, Nia, he's picking that Nia and getting a really high chamber is the key to it. You watch people who are good at kicking, they get that kick up. Like, I can't even push it down now, it's up that high. So, that high kick will then mean a high knee will mean a high kick. If you draw a straight line from your hip through your knee and then extend that line, that's where your foot's going to end up on your kick. So here I am now, and I've got my, I'm now in my second position, ready to let the kick out. My, here's my knee height. There's my hip height. It's, the line is going down, boom. The leg goes down. You're not going to be able to hinge that knee sideways to get a higher kick. And I don't send that leg down and yet get that knee up, okay, to get a kick. And believe you me, I tried it when I was a beginner and I didn't have to mess my knees up. I was doing kicks totally wrong. So from here now, okay, on down block, we're up, we're turning over, get that foot, there's no point in there because I'm kicking there, knee high, and then stamp that kick out, down and back. Now, when you go back from here, you've done your kick. Don't rotate this way. From here, rotate this way if you're going to step back. I mean, in sparring, you wouldn't do that, would you? You can rotate the other way if you're going to put off in the spinning kick, okay? But if you're not going to put off the spinning kick, if you're just going to do your kick, okay, and then just stand and face them, don't turn your back. Don't do that, okay? Just to keep your eye, watch your phone all the time, kick down and back, okay? So now, another little technical thing about this kick. And I don't know if you dawned, this has dawned on any of you guys, so I'm sure many of you know this. When we pick the kick up, the power and the weight is going up. Yeah, that's not where we want it, is it? And then when we do the next move, and this is why people don't like the next move, okay, the power and the techniques are going back. So I've done two parts of this kick, and none of them have took me where I want the kick to go. It's only on the third movement, okay, do I get the technique to go where I want it to go. The further back I call this knee, the more power I will have to do the kick. 
Okay, so that is one big aspect of this kick. You get that round and pull that knee well back, and you'll get a really good, powerful kick. If you're kicking, okay, with your front leg or you're sparring kicking, then, of course, it's all about the speed. You don't need the power. You've got to totally forget pulling that knee back, and you're just going to flick it machine gun kick and start here, okay, like that, okay, just for speed off the front leg. So let's try side kick a couple of times. I want you to really make a big deal, okay, of um, the pull up, the rotate through. Beginners particularly, you'll see senior grades doing this really fast. Don't do that. Take your time. Break it down. Remember when you went to, went to learn to drive a car, you didn't jump in the car and do 100 miles an hour down the motorway on your first lesson. You were off on the back road doing 10 miles an hour. Start off at the basics. So here we go. Knee up. Everybody together. Rotate the bottom foot all the way around, whether you normally do or not. And then from here, stamp, down, and back. Okay, one more time now. Pick up, rotate round, stamp, down, and back. So now, obviously, the opposite side. Okay, and this is where you're going to have trouble for about 85% of you now, because you're going to find that... Uh, it's all on the opposite, the, you the right leg and not the left. So from here now, okay, it's knee up, rotate again, 100, uh, all the way around, so the foot points 180 degrees back, and then stamp, down, and back. Okay, let's have a little look at that kick now with you guys, ready? Up we come. Turn through, oh, a little bit of a shortcut there. Okay, a little bit of a shortcut there for the black belt. Go position one, knee up in front, then don't do that don't, from here. Then rotate through two and then three. Slow it right down. Get the technique right. Okay. So from here now, okay, remember keeping your kicks up because if it's straight out, it's probably going to be below the belt. Okay. Another little thing as well when you do the kick is you need to, you know, get your weight into it. Okay. You don't want to be hinging this way quickly as you kick that way because you're going to fall over in the wrong direction. You hit anybody or anything, okay, and you're actually going to bounce off and fall the other way. So you need to jolt your body into it, go in the direction you're going, okay? Right, okay. So now we're going to go on to um, turning kick very, very quickly. So I haven't got a lot of time. My goodness me, I've got all these plans in front of me of all the things I've got to do today, and I'm about halfway. <laughs> but never mind. Turning kick, okay, from here now. All right. Forearm guard block, knee up. Okay, now the way I was taught this, another little trick you might be interested in. From here, get this chair really in on your hip. Okay, get it really in there, virtually groin level. Okay, to get you to do the turning kick properly. Okay, from here, knee straight up, rotate it over, over the chair, and then kick out. Okay, so that's a great way because if you do the kick wrong and you pick it up the front, which you need to bring it around to bring that kick around like a hook and punch. If you bring it up the front, you'll just catch the chair with your leg, of course, and you'll know you've done it wrong. So it's just up, over, and out. Okay? Obviously, we do it on the other side as well. Okay, so you might want to try this later on. Okay, here, pick your knee up, bring it over the top, back. And it also encourages you, of course, okay, to get to that rotational position. Now, if we go back to the floor again, Let's have a little look here. Notice when I do a turning kick, okay, my foot on the floor is pointing off to an angle. And as my leg comes in, that is also the power line of the turning kick, okay, because the turning kick sort of comes around and in a little bit, okay. So from here, the foot again is on the power line. It's not directly here, okay, it's about 45 degrees. It's not 90, not 180 like the side kick, it's somewhere along the middle there for all of your turning kicks and reverse turning hook and kicks. Right, so now I just want to move on to one last piece because I won't get this in. How to improve hip twist, okay, on techniques. I'm just going to do a couple, okay, so you can do it, all right? So really, the three rules I are that I use in classes and black belt training decisions I take is a bigger, a bigger chamber, okay, the straight line movement towards the final position, okay, increase the acceleration towards your final position, and then a sharp finish. Without those things, you're not going to get a super, super technique. If you're bringing your hands back here, I'm going to do low section knife hand guard and block because I can demonstrate it better here. I'm going to start facing this way. Okay, if I bring the hands from the back and they rotate in, the hands over rotate, I don't finish on my position. I need to bring the hands here to the side. 
not from here. You see so many times, uh, John G, for example, from here. People go from here and do their low block, their chamber in here. Boom. Okay, from here, get it up. Get it up to here. Bam. Okay, so big chambers. So from here now, if you all join me, we're in L stance. We're going to do low section, knife hand guard and box with the knife hands in this position. Okay, so from here now, we reach. Now, don't be frightened of coming out of stance. Yes, this stance is done in L stance sometimes. Okay, but you can come out of L stance, pull in your hip. Okay, to get a good reach. And then from here, accelerate and finish on the spot and breathe out as well. So from here. So ready, with me, okay? We're gonna do five, ready? One, two, three. Are you accelerating? Four, big reach. Five, finish on the spot, bam. Right, change to the side now. So we spin around the other side. Again, pick up high, accelerate down, sharp finish. Ready? Bring it up, one, two, three. Four, five, thorough. Show attention, can you back? Now you can carry that through in, in all of your movements, obviously, one of the next ones to go to would be knife and garden block, low block as I've demonstrated, and even punches. And I'm sure they've been shown already, or some of the masters will show that over the next few days, okay? Um, I've got about a minute or so left, so I'm just wondering if there's any questions out there uh, I'm sorry I've not fit in anywhere near as much as I wanted to do today, okay? But, uh, however, okay, that's uh, something for another day, we hope, okay? Is there anything anyone would like to ask me? Gavin, are you around? Yeah, I'm just checking the YouTube channel, um, sir. Give me two seconds. Okay, sir, so we've got no specific questions through. Okay. Oh, well, that means I must have covered every aspect. Yeah. Excellent. That's what we want to hear. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Well, um, on that note, okay, um, I'd just like to say thank you all very, very much, okay, for taking your time out and having a look at this class. Um, I, I've not covered, um, I, you know, obviously I've only just touched the surface as what was out there um, in, the, in the Taekwondo world, you know, and there are new uh, training styles and teaching methods starting all the time, okay, but I do tend to lean towards the more um, traditional proven methods, to be honest with you. Um, I know tomorrow night you've got the legend, that is um, World Master David Shep, Seventh Dan, a truly superb competition fighter and all-rounder, okay, so please join him tomorrow night. Please remember also uh, our Just Given page for the NHS, okay, um, if you didn't enjoy this seminar, uh, my name is World Master Andy Tomlin, 7th degree, okay? If you did enjoy this training session, my name is World Master Mark Farnham, 7th Dan, okay? Um, take care, be safe, and I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you very much. Cheerio. Kunye. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir.